Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. I welcome you to this video of Gandhi Jayanti. Gandhi who is uh, one of my idols ever since I was a small child and I try to uh, become like him. I try to emulate him in many ways. I know it's impossible but uh, uh, he is something, he is someone whom we should all learn from. Let's remember him for a few seconds and then let's start the video. According to the recently released Indian Tourism Statistics Report, which of the following states of India had the highest number of foreign tourist visits in 2021-22? Maximum number of uh, foreign tourists visited in Maharashtra. Maharashtra received maximum foreign visitors. How many? 1.26 million. Or you can simply say 12,60,000. A close second was which city? Which state? Tamil Nadu. It was 1.23 million. So these two states of India received maximum foreign tourists. When? In 2021-22 financial year. Maximum foreign tourists visited Maharashtra and second highest visited Tamil Nadu. But you need to know uh, more. Now if I ask you which two states of India received the most domestic tourist. Okay. Not foreign, domestic tourist. Then number one was Tamil Nadu. And number two was UP. That's right. Tamil Nadu received highest number of domestic tourists in financial year 22. How many? Tamil Nadu received 140.65 million. That's 14 crore, more than 14 crore tourists. And look at the difference between first and second. UP received 86.12 million. So Tamil Nadu has almost 1.8 times. Uh, the domestic tourist. Tamil Nadu is that popular when it comes to domestic tourists. Is that clear? So, uh, this uh, you can remember. And which was the uh, which was the most visited site in India in the financial year 22? So, these three were the most visited sites. Taj Mahal was number one, Red Fort was number two and Kutum Minar was number three. Taj Mahal received approximately 3.29 million or 32 lakh visitors uh, you know this this I am telling you about the domestic uh, tourist these three are the most visited three places by the domestic um, tourists what about the foreign tourist so foreign tourist maximum visited place was Mamallapuram monument or Mahabalipuram Mamallapuram and Mahabalipuram they mean they mean the same thing is that clear so Mahabalipuram they received the maximum foreign tourist. So foreign uh, visitors, they like to visit, uh, they like to visit Mahabalipuram the most. Is that clear? And Mahabalipuram was uh, built, that monuments were built by the Pallava kings. They were named by Pallava kings. And uh, the town was named after Pallava king Narsim Varman I, who was also known as Mamalla. That is why it is called Mamallapuram. There was a king called Narsim Varman I. He was known as Mamalla. Is that clear? And you will find a lot of things here. You will find the mandaps. You will find the rath or chariots. You will find the descent of the Ganges. Uh, you will find the short temple dedicated to Lord Shiva. So, absolutely gorgeous uh, Mamallapuram. And that also reminds me that Mamallapuram recently hosted the 44th Chess Olympiad also. Right? That was also hosted here. And all this, all this data was released by uh, the Vice President of India, Jagdeep Dhankar. These are basically the Indian tourism statistics. And why they were released now? Because 27th of September is the World Tourism Day. So these were released on the occasion of World Tourism Day, which is 27th of September 2022. So I hope I have covered everything. Uh, most visited um, foreign, most visited domestic, uh, most visited state domestic and most visited state foreign. Is that clear? Okay. And one more thing I will tell you, which are the top countries from which India receives tourists? Well, US, Bangladesh, UK, Canada, Nepal, Afghanistan, Australia, Germany, Portugal, France, Maldives, Sri Lanka, Russia and Iraq and Netherlands. These are the top 15 countries. These accounted for almost 81% of um, tourists in India. right? And how many uh, monuments in India are protected by the Archaeological Survey of India? 
so 3693 monuments in india are protected by asi and there are 40 unesco world heritage sites in india what is the rank of india in the global travel and tourism development index so we were 54th in 2021 so let's move on now these uh, this is uh, the report anyways so recently there is a newspaper called gazeta vaborska it was awarded the golden pen of freedom award by the world association of news publishers it is published in which country it is published in which country and uh, recently this world news media congress took place in spain there is a city called zaragoza that is where it took place so this is a newspaper published in poland it was given the golden pen of freedom award now about poland remember that their capital is warsaw and their currency is zloty and even the miss world is from poland so her name is carolina bilwaska she is the miss world and she is from poland also uh, there is a tennis player from poland called iga swiatek and she won lot of grand slams recently she won the us open also and uh, talking of awards i will uh, mention you one more award which is won by an indian called meena kanda swami she is a dalit writer she is a dalit activist from tamil nadu so meena kanda swami has uh, uh, you know recently won the harman keston prize very prestigious award called harman keston prize 2022 meena kanda swami and she has uh, written some books also called miss militia some of her most famous books are miss militia the gypsy goddess and when i hit you when i hit you now recently pulampara has become the first fully digit digitally literate gram panchayat in india where is it located the fully digitally literate gram panchayat so you guessed it right the answer is kerala and where is it located so this gram panchayat is located in tiruvananthapuram the capital of kerala and it is now fully digitally literate gram panchayat is that clear and talking of gram panchayat which other uh, gram panchayat were in news so india's first amrit sarovar was set up in the patwai gram panchayat in rampur in u in Ra rampur in up and uh, when do we celebrate the panchayati raj day 24th of april 24th of april we celebrate and also jamtada it is the first district in india where all the gram panchayats have community libraries community libraries so regarding that gram panchayats were in news let's move on recently mahakal corridor in madhya pradesh's ujjain district has been named as which of the following so we are talking about here the famous mahakaleshwar jyotirling temple and the newly developed area in this will be now known as shri mahakal lok shri mahakal lok so earlier it was called mahakal corridor and it has been designed on the basis of shiv leela there are 108 mural paintings mural means directly on the walls and there are 93 statues which are set up here and they depict stories related to the life of lord shiva and this will be inaugurated on 11th of october by pradhan mantri narendra modi so the name given to it is uh, mahakal lok and this is a very very famous hindu temple it is one of the 12 jyotirling of lord shiva mahakaleshwar and the temple is located on the bank of shipra river sometimes written like this shipra river is that clear and you know the deity of lord shiva here is believed to be swambhu swambhu means that it was uh, established on its own like nobody established it it just appeared swambhu you know so it uh, derived the power from within itself that is called swambhu southern shenaferner ice sheet was recently seen in news it is in which of the following countries it is located in germany and this ice sheet uh, has melted tremendously fast because of um, because of the climate change and this ice sheet is located in the alps mountains the alps it is located in germany is that clear and uh, 
what else happened in Germany recently? So there is a IPPES9 or COP9, the COP9 of IPPES9. What is IPPES? It is the plenary of the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. In short, IPPES9, COP9 happened in a city of Bonn in Germany. And even the G7 happened in Germany in Schloss Elmo in Bavarian Alps in Germany. And uh, recently, uh, you know, Indian um, minister, Dr. Jitender Singh, he visited which place in America where there was a, um, there was a energy forum that was organized. So which place is that? So remember, that is Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is in Pennsylvania in America and the Global Clean Energy Action Forum Global Clean Energy Action Forum happened here. A new species called Icaria has been discovered. It belongs to which of the following species? So it is a catfish and it is perfectly edible. So those who like fish, they can eat it. And where was it discovered? So it was discovered by an institute called National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources which is located in Lucknow and it works under ICAR. It works under ICAR. So where did they discover it? It was discovered in Mathur Dam. There is a Mathur Dam which is on Kaveri River and this dam is in Salem district of Tamil Nadu. That is where it was discovered and it is perfectly edible. right? Um, so just remember it is a catfish and uh, talking of dam the oldest dam of India is in Tamil Nadu it is called Grand Anikat or you can also call it the Kalanai Dam it is also on Kaveri River and it is in again Tamil Nadu Kaveri River is the only river in peninsular India which has the water on all 365 days and it flows only in two states Karnataka and Tamil Nadu Recently, there is a report called State of Gender Equality and Climate Change in South Asia and the HKH region. So this report was released by which organization? This report was released by International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. Okay, this is a organization um, which is joined by Asian countries. So which countries are a member of this organization? So there are eight countries which are a member of this organization and these are the countries uh, which are essentially in the Hindu Kush range and the Himalayan range. So HKH is Hindu Kush Himalayas. So if anything happens in the Hindu Kush range uh, and the Himalayan range uh, then these countries are affected. So which countries are a member? So Afghanistan, pa you know, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, China, India and Myanmar. In Myanmar we have the Arakan Mountains. Arakan mountain chain is in Myanmar. Hindu Kush is mainly in Afghanistan and Pakistan and Himalayas are of course in the remaining countries. And where is the headquarter for this organization? International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. It is located in Lalitpur and Lalitpur is in Nepal. Lalitpur is in Nepal. Uh, so this report was released recently and it talks about all those same things, climate change and again the same things. And this time it focused on 10 countries, but this organization is joined by only 8 members. Which of the following state has decided to set up academies for the promotion of Surjapuri and Bajika dialects? Now in Bihar, two languages have grown tremendously. One is the Bhojpuri and one is the Maithili. Even all the songs, the music, the culture, the paintings, uh, Maithili and Bhojpuri are very rich. But there are other languages which are which did not rise with time, they have been left behind like Magahi, Angika, Bajika, Surjapuri, etc. So now academies have been set up for Surjapuri and Bajika in Bihar. And uh, Surjapuri language is mostly spoken in Kishanganj by the Muslim community. Kishanganj is a Muslim dominated uh, town. And uh, even some other uh, Simanchal districts in Bihar like Katihar, Purnia, Araria, etc. It is a mix of uh, Surjapuri is a mix of Bangla, Urdu and Hindi. Right? Even in Bengal, in very uh, few parts it is spoken. And what about Bajika? So Bajika is a language which is uh, a mix of mainly Hindi and Maithili 
and it is spoken in Vaishali, Muzaffarpur, and some parts of Sitamadi and Samastipur. Right? But again, these two languages were not able to grow with time, and that is why now there are academies for the two. PM Narendra Modi led the foundation stone for the world's first CNG terminal in which state? So it will be set up in Bhavnagar, very near to the Bhavnagar port. It will be set up in Gujarat. This is the world's first CNG terminal. And uh, this terminal will be built by Mumbai-based company and a Britain-based company, Padmanabhan Group and Foresight Group. There's, there is a British company called Foresight Group. And there is a, a company based in Mumbai called Padmanabhan Mafat Lal Group. Padmanabhan Mafat Lal Group. And the handling capacity will be 1.5 million metric ton of CNG every year. 1.5 million metric ton of CNG every year. Is that clear? The answer is Bhavnagar. And let me also tell you that uh, Bhavnagar will also be developed as a container hub. Container manufacturing, the shipping container manufacturing in India will be done in Bhavnagar. Which of the following country has announced the formal annexation of Kherson, Zapor, Zazia, Donetsk and Luhansk? Donetsk and Luhansk is what you call the Donbass region. So it has been announced by Russia. Russia now has extended its map. So the new map of Russia will have these four places. You can see Luhansk, Donetsk, Zapor, Zazia and also uh, Kherson. So this is 15% of Ukraine's territory and they already occupied Crimea in 2014. So Russia now controls 20% of the Ukraine's territory. Right. So the new map of Russia will extend till here. So you can say that the southeast part of Ukraine has been cut off. So this is more like a victory for Russia because Russia is saying that this is officially a part of Russia. So it will not give it back and it will put all the soldiers and so this is the new border now between Russia and Ukraine. Well, uh, we'll see what happens in the future. But for now, these are Russian territories. Is that clear? So no, Russia now controls over 90,000 square kilometers of Ukraine's total land area. Right. So let's move on now. And Zaporzhia, by the way, is a city where the largest nuclear power plant of the Europe is located. Recently, Indian Council for Cultural Relation, which works under the Ministry of External Affairs, it has signed a MOU with which of the following to ease searching the internet in Sanskrit. So it has partnered with Google recently. Indian Council of Cultural Relations has given 1 lakh sentences to Google that are that will be mostly searched by the people in Sanskrit language. 1 lakh sentence pairs have been given to Google uh, with their translation in Hindi and English. Uh, so uh, this will help people if you today if today you want to search on Google something in Sanskrit you will be able to and who is the president of ICCR it is Mr. Vinay Sahastra Buddhi Vinay Sahastra Buddhi it works under the Ministry of External Affairs and this organization ICCR was founded in 1950 by Molana Abul Kalam Azad he was independent India's first education minister and his birthday on 11th of November we celebrate as National Education Day the government of India will launch a 1 billion dollar fund for two three wheeler two wheeler and three wheeler ev financing if you want to buy a two two wheeler electric vehicle or three wheeler then in partnership with sidbi and which organization this 1 billion dollar fund has been launched so it is in the partnership with world bank the answer is world bank and uh, this is to ensure that there is sufficient funding available for people uh, if they want to take loan for buying two or three wheeler electric vehicles in india India has signed an agreement with which of the following countries for export of the Pinaka rocket system? Pinaka multi-barrel rocket launcher. Multi-barrel means multiple rockets can be fi fired in one go. So India will export it to Armenia. The answer is Armenia and you can see this region is called nogorno karabakh and there is a dispute for nogorno karabakh region between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Both of these countries are at a war. Right? And Pinaka has been developed by DRDO and Samir Kamath is the chairman of the DRDO. So India has got a huge order from Armenia. And India's defense export target is 35,000 crore by 2035. Which of the following has become India's first state or union territory to achieve 100% coverage of booster dose of COVID-19? 
booster dose means the third dose. So which is the first union territory to have 100% coverage of the third dose? It is Andaman and Nicobar Island. In fact, out of all the state and union territory, it is number one. Andaman and Nicobar. And which vaccines are used uh, in India for booster dose? So two vaccines are the same, Covishield and Covaxin, but a third one is called Corbevax. So booster dose of Corbevax is also given across India. Corbevax is made by Biological E. It is a company based in Hyderabad. And Anman Nicobar recently also became India's first Swatch and Sujal state or union territory. Swatch and Sujal means when it is ODF plus also and when it is Har Ghar Jal also. So India's first Swatch Sujal place is also Anman Nicobar. Which of the following state or union territory has announced to develop the largest jungle safari park in Aravali range? It will be set up by the government of Haryana. Aravali hills are in Delhi, Haryana, in Rajasthan and in Gujarat. So they extend from Delhi all the way to Gujarat and the highest peak of the Aravali is located in Mount Abu which is called Guru Shikhar. Aravalis are the oldest fold mountains in the world. So this will be a 10,000 acre safari park. It will be located in two districts of Haryana, Gurugram and Nuhu, N-U-H, Gurugram and Nuhu. And this will be the world's largest artificially created jungle safari park. It will help in the conservation of the Aravalis. The World Health Organization and which of the following organization they have jointly issued guidelines to address mental health issues faced by the global workforce. So WHO and International Labour Organization headquartered in Geneva, they both have issued guidelines regarding mental health issues. Is that clear? And uh, they have defined the work hours. Um, they have uh, uh, given some data how many people are suffering from depression and because of anxiety and depression 12 billion work days are lost every year which cost our economy global economy 1 trillion dollar so 1 trillion us dollar is the cost of mental health issues globally right five percent of the working age population they have mental illness and uh, mental health issues should not be uh, brushed under the carpet which of the following organizations um, ha they have released a list of 50 exclusive and iconic heritage textile crafts of India under the title Handmade for the 21st Century Safeguarding Traditional Indian Textiles. Indian government will set up 7 PM Mitra Park. These are very mega textile park. Total 7 will be set up. Location is not finalized yet. But 50 exclusive and iconic heritage textile crafts of India. Uh, the list has been released by UNESCO. And what are the sum of these? You don't need to know all 50, maybe not even one, but some you should know. For example, Chamba Rumal, Chamba Rumal from, from Himachal, this also has a GI tagged, right? There is uh, Avad Jamdani from Varansi, there is uh, Kunbi Weaves from Goa, there is Mashru Weaves for, uh, Patola from Gujarat. Like there are different crafts in India, right? There is the Bandha Tai and Dai Weaving from Sambalpur. There is the Thigma from Ladakh, Khes from Panipat. So like that, there are 50 uh, iconic heritage textile crafts of India. Is that clear? List is given by UNESCO. And three Indian cities have become part of UNESCO Learning Network. They are Nilambur and Trisur in Kerala and Varangal in Telangana. PM Modi launched the new and upgraded Bhar Vande Bharat Express. It ran between which two station? Gandhinagar and Mumbai. What will be the speed? Speed will be 180 km. And Vande Bharat coaches are manufactured in Integral Coach Factory, which is in Chennai. Which is in Chennai. Is that clear? And it can achieve a speed of, maximum speed of 180 km per hour. And it is equipped with Kavach. Now Kavach is the automatic anti-collision system that is available in the trains. We have only two Vande Bharat trains in India, which are operational at the moment. First one was from Delhi to Varanasi. Second one was from Delhi to Katra. Indian government has set a new target of how much percent reduction in the particulate matter concentration by 2026 in, in the cities under the National Clean Air Program. So there should be 40% reduction in the particulate matter. Particulate matter is of two types, PM2.5 and PM10. PM2.5 means where the particle size is less than 2.5 mm. PM2.5 is more dangerous because the particle size is so small, it is not filtered by the lung, it goes directly into the blood right so there are total uh, you know there are total 
131 non attainment cities non attainment cities means what where, where air pollution is very high those are non attainment cities in which this will be run national clean air program and we are targeting 40% reduction in the pm concentration by 2026 and what is the acceptable limit of pm 2.5 and pm 10 according to the who now this can be asked in the exam not an easy question at all so pm 2.5 average annual average annual concentration should be less than 5 microgram per meter cube of air is that clear and pm 10 should be less than 15 microgram per meter cube of air so this is the norm of the who latest guidelines according to who and odisha government is hosting their first conclave on education called odisha edu invest conclave they want to attract an investment of 1000 crore into the educational sector dharmendra pradhan inaugurated the 13th fikki global skill summit in delhi the theme was education to employability making it happen and ministry of msme they have organized the national scst hub conclave in gujarat recently and this is to raise awareness about the national scst hub scheme and other schemes of the union ministry 20th meeting of the prosecutor general of the shanghai cooperation organization happened in astana in kazakhstan recently and julius bear cup was won by the world champion magnus carlsen he defeated india's arjun erigasi in the final and west zone they have defeated the south zone to win their ninth dilip trophy the final match happened in coimbatore is that clear and world football governing body fifa they have released a three episode series on the life and career of sunil chetri he is the third highest goal scorer in international football after cristiano ronaldo and lionel messi he has 84 goals so that was the video for gandhi jayanti i will see you in the video of 3rd of October. Thank you for watching Study IQ.